It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented, of course, by DraftKings. It's a new week, which means we've got new winners. Cannot wait to announce this week. Spread the word winner at Ross Tucker NFL at Ross Tucker Pod. The latest sponsor confirmation email winner. All you do is take advantage of any of our sponsors. Athletic Greens, ExpressVPN, LinkedIn, always DraftKings, by the way. You can always just take advantage of DraftKings or MyFrontPageStory.com, as well as the YouTube shout-out, YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. And then just subscribe, hit the thumbs up to subscribe, and then any type of comment. It really is that easy. Any type of comment, I notice when someone new does it, it's awesome. Speaking of awesome, I know some of you don't love the off season when we go to three times a week. However, two things need to be said. Number one, we had the opportunity in the off season, kind of like we did in January, to get some more unique, cool, different guests and topics some of which are more of the evergreen variety. We could kind of play them whenever. Some of them are more timely. This week, we'll likely talk to Andrew and Greg. Andrew, there's a lot of business stuff going on. Greg, to get his Super Bowl tape breakdown. But we also have a chance to get other people involved, which is really exciting. I love it. And as a reminder, I think I said this last week, even though the Ross Tucker Football Podcast is only three days a week, it's a great time to start to engage with the College Draft Podcast, which we record on Monday mornings as well, to get ready for the NFL Draft. Emory Hunt is a stud, and he'll get you ready over the next couple months for the draft. We will get you ready for the draft. And then, of course, you know you can also go ahead and listen to Even Money Podcast if you're just a little curious about betting or Fantasy Feast, which is a great way – to analyze the game from a different perspective. So still plenty of ways to have a show ready for you at least five days a week here on the Ross Tucker Podcast Network. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Morning, Ross. Super Bowl 56 in the books. The Los Angeles Rams win Super Bowl 56. 23-20 over the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow. Your thoughts? Well, I've got a lot of them. First of all, another game that was decided by three points. Another game that came down to the end. That's all I ultimately really ask for. I just like if it's competitive and the contest is in doubt late. It's so much more fun that way. And that was absolutely what happened. Some of my uh, bigger thoughts before I kind of go through the game a little bit. No Higby or note bloom for the Rams. The Higby thing was significant, especially after Odell Beckham Jr. got injured. As for the Rams, they also, they did get uh, Daryl Henderson back, who they used quite a bit. Uh, You know, he became the guy they wanted to throw the ball to out of the backfield. So he became a major factor. I was actually surprised after Beckham Jr. went down that they didn't even target Henderson even more. Meanwhile, the Uzama injury for the Bengals, he was back. He made it back for the game. Didn't look like he was 100%, but was able to get the ball a couple times, make a couple plays, even though he wasn't 100%. You're really watching this game and seeing some of the injuries that happened. You realize just how, how long of a season it really is and how banged up some of these guys can become over the course of the year. Just some other random thoughts, I would say. Uh, I I love the Bengals uniforms. Now, I am quite sure part of that is a bias because there's some similarities to Princeton, no doubt. But I just, I like that color scheme. I like the black I like, I just think their uniforms are sweet. And I thought they looked great last night. I thought the the best commercial was the Coinbase commercial. 
you know, I don't talk about stuff like that all that much. But I thought the Coinbase commercial was the best commercial, quite frankly. You know, I'm sitting there with my older daughter and the QR code keep things keep bouncing around. She's like, Daddy, Daddy, there's something wrong with the TV. Daddy, you got to fix this. I'm like, no, I think this is the commercial. I wonder when they're going to say what it's really for. She's like, no, you got to use your phone and do that. So I was like, oh, okay. So then I take my phone. I go like that. And I see it's for Coinbase. Uh, you know, they got, they got a lot of people's attention. They got a lot of people to actually try to go to their website. Now they can serve you, you know, remarketing ads on Google or whatever. I guess their website crashed, which is to be expected. You have to think that that's going to happen, right? You have to think you're going to have an overwhelming amount of people come to your website if you're doing that. But maybe the fact that they crashed, the website crashed, more people are talking about it today. They certainly got their $7 million worth of people discussing it. Some significant injuries in the game. Eric Weddle tears his pec and keeps playing. Can't even really use his arm. You know, that just adds, in my opinion, to what really could be like for Eric, could legitimately be at least a 30 for 30 or maybe like a, a TV movie. I mean, the guy was retired for two years. They called him off the couch for the playoffs, playoffs, and he, st- he plays in all four games. He calls the signals during the Super Bowl, tears his pec, wins it all. I mean, you want to talk about a guy. What a way to go out. Just incredible. Uh, meanwhile, then Odell Beckham Jr. looks like he tore his knee again. Awful. Just awful. I think people either love or hate that guy for whatever reason. I know this much. I I don't ever like seeing anybody get hurt. And I don't like seeing it happen during the game where it's the Super Bowl, biggest game of his life, and he was playing well. And quite frankly, that became a major issue for the Rams. You know, thankfully for them, the guy that stepped up was really Bryson Hopkins, their third string tight end, stepped up and made some plays. No Higby, no Odell Beckham Jr. McVay ran the ball a lot. They couldn't run the ball a lick. Not a lick. It was brutal. The last kind of big picture item, I guess that I will mention, the halftime show I thought was awesome. Now, you know, maybe that's just because a lot of that music is from when I was in high school and college. But, I mean, my wife and I, that that was one of my favorite halftime shows ever. I mean, my wife and I were, like, dancing and singing along. You know, that was that was kind of our era. Although it looks like on social media, most people felt the same way. I don't know. Maybe if you're a lot younger, a lot older, you weren't into it. I can see that. But uh, I loved it. I thought it was Awesome. Absolutely awesome. You know what's not awesome, by the way? People steering, stealing your information. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to be able to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware. I mean, a smart 12-year-old could do it. And your data is very valuable. Do you know hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info of yours? On the dark web, you don't want that. You want ExpressVPN. It creates an encrypted tunnel. It's super secure. It's easy to use. It works on all devices. Thank goodness they're a sponsor. I know about them and I can use them when I'm at airports, on planes, in hotels. Secure your online data today by visiting ExpressVPN dot com slash tucker that's e-x-p-r-e-s-s vpn dot com slash tucker and you can get an extra three months free express vpn dot com slash tucker as for the rest of the game Brian, i kind of it, it's kind of best to just go through it things that jumped out to me as it happened 
you know, early on, the teams are feeling themselves, feeling each other out a little bit, as Steve Fezzik said on the Even Money podcast, that that's what happens. Hendrickson got the sack after Akers kind of knocked Whitworth off of him on the first series. The Bengals get like nine yards on a throw to Tyler Boyd, and then they get no yards the next three plays. They had a, a couple runs. I don't know why they run Samaj P. Ryan in short yardage ever. It, it's actually a really big missed opportunity that the Bengals lost this game. They ran the ball much better than the Bengals did. I mean, than the Rams did. Much better. But twice on third and short, they, they don't give the ball to Joe Mixon. It's P. Ryan. Sometimes these guys outthink themselves. I mean, Joe Mixon is a big hammer of a running back. So even on that first drive, they go for it on fourth and one, and they don't get it. The Rams answered right away. Uh, Cooper Cup had a big catch and run. He was the MVP. I thought he deserved it. I think you can make a case for Stafford. I think you can make a case for Aaron Donald. And maybe they could have had a co-MVP because Donald was incredible. But Cooper Cup had that catch run. Then Odell Beckham Jr. beat Mike Hilton. It's really good coverage by Mike Hilton. Odell Beckham Jr. is just so strong at the catch point. So it's 7 nothing at that point. Um, then the, the Bengals, it was awesome. Bengals answered right back. They threw a bomb to Jamar Chase, who j- he beat Ramsey, made an incredible catch. I thought one fair critique, perhaps, of the Bengals is that they didn't go to chase enough. You know, I would have given him more contested catches. He's so good in those situations. Ramsey ended up making a play on Higgins to hold the Bengals to a field goal. You know, there was some contact there between Ramsey and Higgins on that one that they let go. I am on board with that. I I am on board with letting him play. Unfortunately, there was a clear instance late in the game where they didn't let him play. I'll get to that. The Rams ended up making clutch throws to Odell Beckham Jr., Daryl Henderson. I mean, Stafford, he, it took him a while before he had an incomplete pass. Stafford was in a groove. That led to the Cooper Cup touchdown against Eli Apple, who always seems to have once a game, at least, where he just totally gets lost and loses his coverage responsibility. But then they messed up the extra point. Johnny Hecker didn't have a good grip on it. Gosh, can you imagine Johnny Hecker thinking about that if they end up losing the game because they couldn't tie it with the field goal late? They had to go for the touchdown. I think about that. I think about like the Vernon Hargraves penalty. I get that in a second. Anyway, 13-3. Rams were up by 10. But then Burrow had a pass to Chase, another pass to Higgins. Joe Mixon throws a touchdown pass to T. Higgins. And as I said, multiple times, these Bengals don't blink. 13-10, the Bengals got back. And then at the end of the first half, Joe uh, Stafford threw a pick. Jesse Bates intercepts it. Not a great decision or a throw by Stafford. But Van Jefferson, come back for the ball, bro. Turn into a defender. Make a play on the ball. Something. I thought that was brutal. And then Vernon Hargraves. I mean, this guy has been in the NFL a long time. Just absolutely loses his mind. Has no helmet, shoulder pads on, nothing. Runs onto the field. Penalty. I mean, it didn't ultimately make a difference, but it could have. I mean, instead of getting the ball to 20, they got the ball to 10. Look up the uh, probability of scoring when that's this when that's the scenario. After that uh, second half, wow, got started with a bang right after the awesome halftime show. Burrow to T. Higgins, seventy-five yard touchdown, first play. Here's the thing: T. Higgins clearly tugged Jalen Ramsey's face mask forward, which you I learned this early in life. You control the head, you control the man. Control the head, you control the man. Pulls the face mask forward. Ramsey loses his balance. Higgins catches it. Touchdown. That was unfortunate. I'll say this, though. And you guys know, if you ever watch me call a game or listen to me call a game, or even on this show, I would rather them err on the side of letting them play 
than throwing a flag that isn't there. But that should have been a flag. I mean, you can't pull a guy's face mask uh, to, to help yourself catch a football. Then the Rams' first play, Stafford throws interception to Awuzie off of Skaronic's hands. And you're thinking, whoa, you want to talk about a change to start the second half. But you know what happened? This hasn't been talked about enough. It's why I believe he should have been co-MVP. Aaron Donald had two sacks. Now, one was Joe Burrow just running to try to run to the sideline. I don't care. Donald chased him out. Loss of a yardage. That's a sack. And it put him in a worse third down situation. Then he bull rushed the heck out of Adenogy to get a sack when, you know, Burrow had Higgins open. They might have scored another touchdown. Put the game in a very different position. I thought those two sacks for Donald were huge. Absolutely huge. Then the Rams actually moved the ball. You know, Stafford get the Hopkins, Henderson, Cup, but they tried to get a little fancy in Cooper Cup. What's the expression? He makes a better uh you make a better door than a window, right? Like if you're standing in front of somebody and they can't see. Well, Cooper Cup makes a better receiver than he does quarterback. That's for sure. Terrible throw by him. Rams have to kick a field goal 20 to 16, not 20 to 17 because of Johnny Hecker's bad hold. Then what I thought was one of the keys to the game, Joe Burrow started taking sacks you can't take. I mean, I didn't love the one he took from Aaron Donald. Then he takes another bad sack. Then he missed a wide open Jamar Chase in what was probably Burrow's worst throw of the game. That was a that was a killer. That would have been a first down. I think we're talking maybe late third quarter. Then Stafford was under pressure. He got hurt on a DJ Reader sack. That then the game kind of stalled out. There wasn't a whole lot of movement. Burrow takes two more sacks that are on him. Listen, if you see a guy coming at you and you start to brace for the sack, that is on you. Joe Burrow is smart enough to know you got to throw the ball away. It gives you almost no chance to score on that series if you take sacks like that. Burrow got hurt on a sack, and then Isaiah Prince got a, a really stupid penalty hitting one of the Rams in the face. Just that the, the the Bengals actually had a couple stupid penalties that hurt them. The teams just kept trading punts though. And then Tyler Boyd had a big drop. Tyler Boyd had a nice night, but that drop. Now I don't know if he would have gotten the first down anyway. And I don't know if the Bengals would have gone for it on a fourth down anyway, but that was a big drop for Boyd. Uh, you know, then, the, then, um, then the touchdown drive. Then we get late in the game. Stafford, uh, he just kept feeding Cooper Cup, which is what you should do. Feed that guy. Feed Cooper Cup. And then they, I thought that was interesting where uh, McVay gave the ball to Cup on the fourth and one run. That was a little gutsy call. Cup stepped it up. That whole drive, though, it seemed like it was Cup. The most unfortunate officiating move of the game was when they called a hold on Wilson. I think he was working against Cooper Cup on linebacker Logan Wilson on third and long. That was that was a really poor call. There's no way that was a hold on Logan Wilson. And I express my frustration all the time. When in doubt, don't throw the flag. Especially when you've been letting him play all game. Especially when there's less than two minutes left in the game. You do not Throw that flag in that situation. Very, very frustrating. That said, maybe you could argue it makes up for the T. Higgins face mask pool. I'll let you guys debate that. But I, I did not like, look, I didn't like either missed call. But that was a, I'd rather them miss, like let them play like the Higgins thing than throw a flag when there wasn't one. Then interestingly enough, after that, they had an offsetting penalty on Havenstein and Von Bell on a touchdown to Cup. But I don't even know 
if that was really a penalty by Von Bell. You know, we only got two quick looks at it. The second one looked to me like it was a shoulder to Cup's chest. I didn't see it in super slow-mo. I didn't even need to see that again because I don't know that that was a penalty on Von Bell. But Havenstein had a hold, which they never showed either, by the way. But that could have made it, you know, that changed a lot because that became an offsetting penalty rather than pushing the Rams back. Ultimately, um, it led to the Cooper Cup, you know, third and one touchdown, back shoulder throw from Stafford. The Bengals actually got a couple first downs on the next drive. Ultimately, though, Aaron Donald gets on Joe Burrow, fourth and one. I mean, it was second and one, I think. And they got stuffed. Was it two runs, maybe? Certainly, P. Ryan was one. He cannot break a tackle, run through a tackle with power to save his life. Um, and so then Donald got pressure on Joe Burrow on fourth and one to close it out, which is why I thought perhaps they should have been co-MVPs because Donald, once again, I thought to stop the touchdown after the interception by Awuzie and then to close out the game, I thought Donald deserved some consideration. Both Donald and McVay, by the way, last couple days, dropping strange hints about possibly retiring. Sean McVay is talking about family life. Aaron Donald possibly retiring. I would just say I I think it's possible, and I would not have any problem with it. Aaron Donald's already a Pro Football Hall of Famer. He's already made a ton of money, and he already is a champion, and maybe he doesn't want to do any more damage to his body. I would never, ever criticize a guy for that. That said, you get away from it for a couple months and you realize, man, I, theoretically, I'd have to give back $8 million. Rams probably wouldn't make him, but they could. And he's supposed to make like $15 million. Maybe this is a way for Aaron to get more money, a, a new contract. But maybe he feels like he's got enough money. I don't know. We can talk about it more. But he, there's nothing else he can do in life right now to make that kind of money. So we'll see. Um, and that's that's the game. That's what I have to say about the game. Absolutely, uh, you know, other than the exchange of punts for a lot of the second half, I thought it was a really, really good Super Bowl. This podcast, by the way, is sponsored by BetterHelp. This is really cool. You know, we had on a few weeks ago um, an expert on mental health. We even had Kerry Hastings. Remember when Dr. Kerry Hastings, the – team sports psychologist for the Rams came on a few months ago. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. So if there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, we all have issues at times. This is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online broad range of expertise available this is really cool and and a and a good way to go about it to try to get people the help they need especially now that we're talking more and more about mental health these days visit betterhelp.com slash football that's better h-e-l-p help not health and join the over two million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for you guys, Ross Tucker Podcast listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash football. Cool. Tuck Stakes. Had some other news uh, outside of Super Bowl 56 this Super Sunday weekend. Uh, let's start with Kyler Murray. Not happy with the Cardinals. He feels scapegoated. Cardinals think he's a bit immature. I don't see anywhere where Kyler Murray, where the Cardinals scapegoated Kyler Murray. Like I, I didn't see that anywhere. Maybe I missed something. Maybe it's something local. But I didn't see that anywhere. And honestly, in my opinion, him cleansing his social media of any reference to the Cardinals 
just proves to that he is immature. And by the way, I've heard that for years about Kyler Murray, but I don't even need to speculate. Cleansing his social media, I mean, grow up, dude. They, you, they drafted you number one overall. They're paying you millions of dollars. You're not happy about the fact that you lost the playoff game. Maybe you want a new contract, so you cleanse your social media. Honestly, I, I think that that's embarrassing, and I think it is immature. Tux takes. A lot of reports over the weekend about the Green Bay Packers giving Aaron Rodgers a contract of $45 million a year. Looks like they've kissed and made up, and they're in a good place. Well, there's lots of reports of that. And I thought our guy, Andrew Brandt, at Andrew Brandt, host of the Business of Sports podcast, I got to text him to make sure, but should have Andrew on Wednesday's show. I thought he made some really good points. Why are the Packers going out of their way to get this stuff out there in the public? Why are they making it clear how much money they're willing to give them, how good things are going? Nah. Andrew Brandt's antenna is up. And so is mine. It feels like they're going uh, uh, they're going out of their way to make it so that, number one, it's uncomfortable for Rodgers to leave because it's out there that they're in a good place and that they're offering him the highest paid guy or whatever. But also, I feel like on some level, they want to be able to say, if Aaron does go elsewhere... We did everything we could. We, I mean, we did everything. We, we offered him this contract. We did everything we could. They're, they're setting the tone to try to save face if Rodgers does leave. For people like me and Andrew that can read between the lines, that's certainly what it feels like. Tux Takes. And finally, the Indianapolis Colts are going to trade or possibly – outright release Carson Wentz before his $15 million salary guarantee kicks in. So I believe Chris Mortensen had the Kyler Murray report and the Carson Wentz report. I believe the Carson Wentz report that the Colts would like to move on from him. However, Joel Corey, our buddy who's come on the show, talked about the fact that $15 million is already guaranteed for Wentz. He gets $7 million more guaranteed March 18th. But $15 million is already guaranteed. So, I don't know that they, they're not going to release him. That's highly unlikely. Maybe they'll try to trade him. I don't know who wants to take on $22 million. So, maybe the Colts will release him. And just eat the $15 million that has no offset. No offset. Means they got to give him a check for $15 million. He gets whatever he gets from somewhere else. Wow. That is big news. But I, I think Mortensen might have been wrong on the math there a little bit. Joel Corey's the guy when it comes to contract stuff. Shout outs, by the way, to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, Human Head NYC, Dot com and SteakhouseSports.com. We will have a fresh new College Draft podcast early this morning, including going over some of the scouting lessons that we learned from watching the Super Bowl. Should be fun. Make sure you subscribe and listen to the College Draft podcast. Emery is an up-and-coming stud. Other than that, the offseason is still football season. There is no offseason. Combines like in a week and a half, then you have free agency, then you have the draft. Hopefully you guys aren't going anywhere because I'm certainly not. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100 Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, 
if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. Mm -hmm.